honor tonight to introduce to you someone who is dynamic and well-placed in the technology field, Mr. John B. Clink Scales. He and I briefly spoke about his bio, so I don't want to go through the entire thing because it's extensive. He said, come on, man, just hit the highlights. So I'm going to make sure I hit the highlights. John B. Clink Scales has more than 30 years in the information technology industry with demonstrated success in leadership. He progressed from hands-on network engineering roles to regional and executive management serving as a client delivery executive and an account manager in the Global Financial Markets Group in New York. John B. is a problem solver who improves technical operations and alignment with strategic business plan direction. John B. is currently in the role of Hewlett Packard HP Capabilities Manager in the Infrastructure Modernization Practice, leading teams offering transformational consulting services for data center and infrastructure modernization projects. Say that three times as fast. <laughs> Previously, as a program manager, he led the server virtualization project, as well as enterprise upgrades for Exchange 2010, Active Directory, and Service Center Configuration Manager, SSM client projects. In 2010, John B. worked on the HP Simex account, coordinating all planning for data center consolidation projects. This included development of migration scheduling for 400 servers over 26 weekends, and oversight for build-out of HP Blade enclosures for VMware server farms. Needless to say, John B. is very accomplished. He's had an extensive career, and I think he is more than qualified to speak to us on tonight's topic. So without further ado, please put your hands together for John B. Clink Skills. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do a quick mic check. How's the volume? Can you hear me okay? All right. So tonight we're going to have a dialogue, and I promise to share with you what I know about cloud. If you promise to share with me what you know about cloud. So it'll be two ways. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So let's get started here. So we're going to talk about a couple of things, and I know you got a very busy and full program, so we're going to move quickly, uh, and we'll try to save the questions to the end. I'll give you a little overview that should be consistent with what most of you do already know about cloud. We'll talk about some of the business trends that is heightening the interest in cloud. We'll talk about one of the more challenging aspects that we're finding in HP is actually moving some of your current applications uh, into the cloud. We'll talk about the HP approach to moving things in general, data center services and infrastructure modernization services, and that is a hybrid delivery approach. We'll get into that and what that's about. I'll show you a decision tree and we've been using it at HP to help clients understand the options that they have from HP to pick the most appropriate cloud solution. And then we'll look at the uh, portfolio that HP has to offer. So it's not an HP ad. I want you to learn something about cloud, but I am going to take the opportunity to talk about what HP can offer you. All right, so um, many of you have had previous work with the uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology, and they have put out a definition of cloud services that resonates, and I have heard many architects talk about it. So we will use this as the basis of our discussion, uh, and it talks about the fact that there are five characteristics, and we're going to see these five, <coughs> excuse me, we're going to see these five characteristics presented in several dis di different forms. So. One of them is the uh, on-demand self-service. Network access is key. You, may, you, you have to be able to get to it from your phone, from the Internet, wherever you are. Uh, resource pooling, meaning that you have to have a collaborative source of resources that generate the service. And this, I think, is the most important one, that rapid elasticity. That's a key feature for cloud. And then you have to have a measured service. We're going to look at the, the three models. Somebody here in our earlier discussion talked about infrastructure as a service. We'll touch a little bit on uh, platform and software as a service. And of course, you can, uh, we'll look at the difference between public, private. Uh, we're going to show you a lot about hybrid models. And uh, we probably won't touch community, uh, but that's a fourth model that NIST has defined. I think, there we go. All right, so again, this is actually another view of what we just saw. And that this one shows you that there's absolutely some features that are important to make up this cloud delivery. Um, we see that that pay per use is that metered feature. 
you have to be able to decide if you want to buy your cloud services by the drink or by the bottle, uh, by the CPU or by the server, uh, by the cluster. So you want to be able to only have to pay for the portion that you need. Uh, again, the f feature on the right, the rapid elasticity, Abel ability to scale up and scale down capability to meet business demand. That's one of the, the features because if you think about the difference between cloud and what many of you have been doing to deliver hosting services, the, a lot of the cloud stuff is the same. But the one thing to me, from my experience, that really makes cloud stand out is the elasticity, to the ability to move up and down in capacity very, very quickly. Uh, again, you have to share those resources and deliver the service. Many of us remember the days when the server was under the desk, right? And, and then you got finally to the fact when the server would go into a rack, and then the rack got smaller and smaller, and then the, uh, it turned out that the servers now went into an enclosure, and there were blades. Um, but with all of that change in the hardware footprint, the goal is to make all of that act as one. So resource pooling is a, and it's a key feature. Again, network accessibility goes towards what I said earlier about the need and the ability to be able to access your cloud services over the Internet wherever you are. So this is just another view of some of the cloud computing features that are important to remember, and there are five of them. This is another view from Gardner on those very same five features. And the reason I, I hit these five features over and over again is because I think that these are clear takeaways that you can use. I see some smiles on the face because they probably have seen these features uh, listed by Gardner before. So now we start with NIST. We have Gardner. So these are the industry accepted definitions of what cloud service is about. Uh, and we can see, again, service-based scalable and elastic, shared resources, metered use, that was on the other slide, it said pay per use, and then internet technology. So these are what uh, Gardner used, and as we can read here, a style of computing where scalable and elastic IT related capabilities are provided as a service using internet technologies. That's the Gardner definition. So. If we talk about infrastructure, platform, and software as a service, these are some of the major players in those areas. Uh, and if we had the time, many of you could probably tell me about some of these that you've used uh, in your environment. I will take one minute to ask, any of these icons ring a bell with anybody? Has anybody used any of these cloud services they want to share briefly? This lady here? Oh, no. I'm sorry. This gentleman here? All right, we're going to give you a mic so that everybody could hear you and those on the Internet. To add some exposure to uh, SaaS, this software as a service, particularly Salesforce. Um, loud, it hits all the marks, uh, particularly the elasticity of being able to ramp up uh, user base very quickly, uh, a matter of days or even hours versus what traditionally would have taken weeks or months. And, and one final question, is that you, you personally or is it your whole group that you're in at uh, your company? Well, well part, of an part of an implementation team or, or to implement Salesforce uh, for a client. Right. Great. Anybody else have some familiarization with any of this gentleman here? One more. Um, actually, there are two platforms. There's the SaaS and um, PaaS. Uh, my I have a consulting business for information security, and I use Google, actually the Google services for the SaaS and the PaaS because it's highly collaborative, right? Because a, a lot of the work that we do is um, real time, and so we can actually have dispersed users across the globe use same tools collaboratively without, um, without delay. Right, very good example. Okay, uh, and uh, my wife was a principal in New York, and the entire school 
ran on uh, Google Docs for all the administration and report cards and things like that. Uh, so that's just another example. So again, we held to the Gardner defines cloud computing as a style of computing where scalable and elastic IT-related capabilities are provided as a service to customers using Internet technologies. So why do we have uh, cloud computing for dummies? One is because I put this up because uh, m several of our senior technical folks was involved in the creation of this particular uh, book. It's also available, if you get with me, the URL, you can download the PDF. Uh, you can see that it goes through the basics here and understanding cloud. It gives you the features that we talked about. Here they are again, scalable, self-service, using web, billing and metering services, monitoring and me measuring performance, providing security. Uh, and then it goes on to talk about the three platforms and getting inside the cloud. Uh, here it talks about the things that you need to do to manage the cloud. And if we had more time, we'd talk about that because sometimes we rush to these things and don't get the proper management and governance behind it and don't take full capabilities to our use. So managing it is very, very important. And then here we talk about harnessing the cloud enabling technologies, right? We also know that many of you, who has not been involved in some form of virtualization? Who has not been involved in some form of virtualization? This gentleman right here. Will you win the prize? <laughs> Just, I thought, uh, I didn't think we'd have anyone, but uh, and maybe if I asked you some questions, you'll probably realize there is some virtualization in your background because everybody's done that already. But now, how do you get all these virtual servers into a cloud environment? And does it make sense to do that? Is that the right business proposition to move that? Uh, chapter 6, I think, is good in that it begins to explore why you would be moving to a cloud. Some of the things to consider. Um, how flexible is your existing computing environment? And you can see the whole list of uh, questions here. How are you kindly, currently handling your security requirements? Because if your environment is currently not secure, then obviously you've got to do a lot more stuff to move it into the cloud. And security is one of the things we'll talk about uh, later that HP provides because that's always one of the questions and hesitance that people have about moving into the cloud. So this is an architecture. Actually, uh, NIST just put this out uh, last year. So I've been using it because I think it kind of structures the players around it and the actors. And although we have uh, five distinct roles defined here, some of these roles can be uh, combined. Uh, we're going to look at another slide that will give us the cloud provider uh, detail that will sh um, help us understand and, and repeat some of the things that we've already seen. Uh, we know that you got to have a carrier, and that's a key role. Sometimes we do talk about cloud and haven't considered the, the network or making those improvements in our network to uh, completely deliver the cloud services. And, and typically, you will find that the cloud provider and the cloud broker services are delivered by often the same organization. Um, and I think the cloud auditor role is also an important role because you want to be sure that what you really are getting is cloud services and not just virtualized services. Uh, and of course, all of us are cloud consumers because we probably have gotten Netflix, right? Netflix is on Amazon Web, and that's a cloud service, so we all have consumed it one way or the other. So that's one view of the NIST computing reference architecture and the actors and their roles. Uh, in this view, we can begin to see that some of the things that the broker would do in terms of service intermediation as well as aggregating services, um, we can see within the cloud provider role that they have to do that service orchestration. That's one of the new phrases in terms of delivering cloud management is orchestration of all these services. So you'll hear that phrase again. Uh, you can look at the management services that are important here, and the key one is that provisioning and configuration. As this gentleman said here about uh, consuming Salesforce.com, it was the ability to uh, uh, increase the capacity of those software services quickly and then turn them off when you don't need them, but you need some management of that as well. Uh, and then, again, we have some specific definitions of what that cloud auditor will do. Um, 
So these are some of the roles, and I like to show you that because I think it gives us a, a broader structure of an architecture we can use as a reference. Okay?